Hi, this is Dr. Todd Cooperman, president and founder of ConsumerLab.com, which has been testing all types of nutrition products and supplements since 1999. And we just finished testing all these protein powders and a protein drink to determine really uh, what is in these products, uh, how good is their quality, and which are our top picks for Consumer Lab members. All of this information is in our report on ConsumerLab.com. But I'd like to take just two minutes to give you a quick overview of what protein powders are, who can benefit from them, how and when to use them, and really how do the products differ. So first, who should use protein powders? Well, older people often don't get enough protein, and this contributes to muscle loss that normally occurs with aging. Second, people who are doing athletic training also benefit from having extra protein. Now taking protein powder alone won't increase muscle mass and endurance and strength, it only helps when it's used in conjunction with resistance training, both in older people and younger people. An exception is that people who have had surgery recently and are bedridden may also help reduce the loss of muscle uh, by supplementing with protein. So how much protein do you normally take? About 30 to 50 grams of extra protein. And these can be easily measured with the scoops that come with these products. You should just be aware that if you're older or have problems with blood pressure or on a blood pressure lowering medication, um, there may not be an effect where about two to three hours after taking protein, uh, your blood pressure can be reduced a little. So be careful getting up from a sitting position uh, if you're in that condition. So when should you actually take the protein powder? Research suggests that it's best after exercise rather than before. And if you're trying to lose weight, take it with meals rather than between meals. So how do the products differ? Well, first they differ in terms of the type of protein that's in them. Some are uh, dairy-based like whey and casein, and some are plant-based like soy and pea proteins. Um, the, some of the plant-based proteins like soy and pea can be a little low in one of the amino acids, methionine, um, uh, which you actually can get from the rest of your diet. So it's not really a, a problem for most people. Um, casein and whey are a little closer to the amino acid composition that you'd find in your muscle. Products also differ in quality, and that's what we do here at Consumer Lab is to actually buy and test all these products in the laboratory um, for their uh, different carbohydrate levels, protein levels, uh, fats, etc. We also look for heavy metals, and what we found was that three of these products were actually high in sodium. So the protein wasn't so much an issue as having more salt uh, than they contain, which is of concern if people are trying to uh, reduce their salt intake. Also, one of these products was contaminated with lead, which is a heavy metal that you should try to avoid. Uh, unfortunately, we've actually found that um, heavy metal contamination occurs in protein powders. It's, we found that every time that we've tested protein powders, uh, we found uh, lead, cadmium, arsenic, depending on the type of product. It's typically not from the protein, interestingly, from, but from other ingredients uh, added to these products. If you're watching calories, you may want to look for an isolate because the isolates remove the carbohydrates and other fats that are uh, in the products, um, giving you really just the protein. This also helps if you're lactose intolerant because the lactose can be removed from the dairy-based products such as whey and casein. Also be aware that products that have uh, flavors or sweeteners in them, some of those uh, sweeteners can actually cause gas. Um, some can leave kind of an unpleasant lingering sweetness taste, uh, which some people don't like. Um, so you need to look at the other ingredients that are in them, or you may just want to choose an unflavored product and add your own, add it to your own juice or, or shake, etc. The products also differ in cost significantly. Actually, we found that you can get 20 grams of protein for as little as about 40 cents from some of these products or, or as much as $5, so about you know 12 times as much. Um, so uh, if you're careful, you can get a good quality product really for much uh, lower cost than some others. Some of the products do cost more because they have other added ingredients um, which make them more of kind of a, uh, a meal replacement. So as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, all the details uh, and the product specific information and our top picks and the problems that we found are all in the report on consumerlab.com, which is available to our members. Uh, you can join and get immediate access to this report and reports on over a hundred different uh, types of uh, popular supplements and healthy foods. So again, this is Dr. Todd Cooperman with consumerlab.com. Thanks for your time.